In this video tutorial, I am going to model a table. Uh, the first thing that I did was I went online and I just found some examples of tables to get an idea of what I was looking for. I found this table. I thought it was pretty cool. I'm going to make this table. Uh, I'll teach you some modeling concepts that will be really useful, like extruding and beveling um, in this tutorial today. So I want to start with the polygon cube. I'm just going to drag a shape here. And I'll hit W to switch to my move tool and just lift it up so that I can work underneath it without the grid getting in the way. And I want to right click on this table so that I can select the sub object. And I want to choose the face. Face allows me to choose each side on their own. And with this face, I'm going to choose the extrude tool here. With extrude, there's a couple of things that I can do. I can increase the thickness, I can decrease the thickness, I can offset. Offset allows me to create a smaller version of that face inside of the larger one. So if I offset this a little bit, then I can create a new cube that comes out of the bottom of this previous one. But I need to click Extrude again to create a brand new extrusion. Then I can choose Thickness. And I'm going to extrude this out a little bit. Click Extrude again. Offset this slightly. And this time, I'll extrude one more time. And this time, instead of extruding it out, I'm going to extrude it in. And extruding it in will cut away from the existing geometry, which you can see there. It creates a hole. And so now I've created the base of my table. And I want to add a little bit extra to it. So I'm going to uh, bevel around this bottom edge of the table. I'll right click on it, change to edge, and I'll choose this edge. Now if I double click, it should do an edge loop, which takes me all around. If not, sometimes it doesn't. It loses track of what the edges are. I can hold down Control and select multiple edges as well. I mean Shift, I'm sorry. Um, so I'll double click on that to make sure all of my edges so are selected. And then up here in Edit Mesh, I'm going to choose the Edge Bevel. And you can see this is called a chamfer. It's just a sharp edge. It's taken that and uh, kind of cut off the edge of it. And inside of my channel box here, one of my options is Poly Bevel. So if I click on that input, I'll be able to see the things that I can change for this bevel. And with each of these, I can just click on the name of the thing I want to change. So I want to add more segments to round it. I click on segments and then I come out here to my um, view screen and I hold down my middle mouse button and I can drag it to increase that number. I can also just type in a number. But if I increase the segments it goes from a chamfer to a fillet. So I've got a nice rounded edge now if that's what I want. I can also in, uh, increase here fraction. If I hold down my middle mouse button and drag it to the right that fraction number gets bigger. To the left it gets smaller. And so I can just um, sharpen an edge like that. And that's a really fast way to make it look like you've spent a lot of time on something is giving it one of these finishes, like uh, any kind of bevel around the edge. Now I'm going to make some legs, and I could extrude these out of the existing ones, but I'm just going to create a new um, cube here. I'll just draw and extrude it up. And all the sizes I can always change later by hitting R for my um, scale tool and then I can just drag this bigger or smaller and I can always shrink the whole thing proportionally by choosing that middle one but I'm just gonna place this on one of these edges so I'll move this around a little bit I'm always moving things only using the arrows because that makes it easier to place things and maybe I want it to be a little smaller so I'll press R and scale it down a little bit Sometimes moving to one of the one of my four views, like my top or my front views, can help with that. If I come over here, switch to the front view and see how it looks straight on. Press four to turn on my wireframe temporarily, and five to go back. So that looks pretty good. Um, I want to make a duplicate of that. Maybe I'll make it a little taller first. I just want it placed inside of the previous one because I'm going to combine this with the, the tabletop in a little bit. I'll press Control D to make a duplicate, which goes right on top of the previous one, and then I can move this one slightly. I'm going to select them both by holding down Shift. Make sure I'm on my object mode. Object mode lets me select everything, and it's usually what I should be using if I'm moving things, is if I want to move the entire thing. And I'll press Control D again, which will uh, duplicate both of them and I'll drag them over to this side. Now right now these are all separate 
pieces of geometry. If I click on each leg, they're all separate. Um, if I want them to all be one piece of geometry, I can select all of them, come up here to Mesh, Booleans, Union. And that will combine them all, so now it's all one piece. When I texture it, it'll all be one large uh, piece of geometry to use. Now I can go back to my image, and I'm just trying to add more elements. The more stuff that I have in this, the, the better it'll look. It just involves uh, spending the time that's needed to, to put in that detail that'll make something really stand out. So I'm going to add a thin piece of wood that'll go in here. To make it smaller, I'll probably make it thinner a little bit too. And I'm going to make some vertical slats as well. But each new thing I add will just make it look better. I'm not too worried about the overlap of things because I'm going to combine them eventually. I am going to shrink this down so that it fits, and I'll just stretch it this way. And I want a couple of these across, so I am going to press Control D, move it slightly. Oops, try that again. Control D, I'm going to move it a little bit. And now if I press Shift D, it should move and copy it at the same distance. And I can highlight all of those. And if I want to, I can press Control G to group them temporarily before I uh, copy them and move them across. So I'll have to center that pivot again. But now I have a whole new set that I can move over here as well. So I don't have to do things twice if I don't need to. And in each new thing I add will make it look better. I'm going to throw a thin little piece here. And then when I'm good with it all, I can if I'd like to, if, if that'll be easier for me to, to texture it, it might not be, but I'm going to come here to Mesh and choose Booleans Union again. Now it's all one piece again, and it's ready to be textured. And so in the, in the next uh, tutorial, I will show you how to very quickly put a texture onto this.